Hi and welcome to Peacemag TV. In today's Lightroom video we're going to take a look at the Knit Collection from Google and why you should download it. So what is the Knit Collection and why should you download it? Well first of all the Knit Collection is basically a group of effects plugins that you can use in both Photoshop and Lightroom and they were originally released by Knit Software which was then bought out by Google and finally, in the last couple of days, Google have turned around and made this incredibly powerful suite of software available for completely free. So you may be thinking, okay, it's free, but is it any good? Well, first of all, Google bought it, so it's a pretty safe bet that it is a good bit of software. But the reality is, if you've never used the Nick software in the past, then you really have missed out on some incredibly powerful software that speeds up your entire process and gives you access to tools and functions that you may not have available inside Lightroom or Photoshop or in respects to using it quite so easy as you can in the Knit Collection. So what I'd suggest you do is come over to the link, which will be in the description below for the Knit Collection, hit the download, fill out the relevant details, download and install this, and then boot up either Photoshop or Lightroom and take a look at what's on offer. But what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to quickly go in and show you one or two of the actual plugin suites and some of the things that make it so good. So let's take a look now. We'll just drop over to Lightroom. And we'll take a look at what uh, what we have available to us. So I'm in Lightroom and we've got Nick, uh, the Google Nick collection already installed. So let's just say, for example, I want to take this image and I want to work with it and I want to create a black and white. What I can do is I can right click and I can choose edit in and you can see we have now a whole range of new options available to us which are all part of the Nick collection. So we've got the Analog Effects Pro, we've got Color Effects Pro, Define which is there to do sharpening, we've got uh, Silver Effects Pro for great black and white images, we've got Viveza 2 which is a great way of creating really colorful, vibrant, punchy images. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at just jumping into the Silver Effects, Silver Effects Pro 2 and take a look at some of the black and white functions we have available to us inside this suite. So what you're going to find is when you select this, it's going to ask you for a few different bits of information. It's going to ask you how do you want to work with the image? Do you want to edit a copy with any Lightroom adjustments you've got? Do you want to just edit a copy or do you want to edit the original? You can then specify what format or what file options you want to work with when you create your image. So you can see we've got TIFF, PSD and JPEG available to us. We can choose the best color space from Pro Photo RGB, Adobe RGB and sRGB. We've got the bit depth where we want to work in 16 or 8 bit. And finally we've got the actual resolution and compression settings. So you can see we can apply compression to it by using LZW or zip compression. Now, the choice is entirely up to you. If you intend to work in Photoshop after you've made your edits in Lightroom, then I would suggest using the PSD option. I would personally stay away from using JPEG because then that's going to start applying compression and it's not going to be the best option available to you. So I would say either TIFF or PSD unless you're doing a quick rough edit, at which point JPEG will be fine. So you can choose your color mode. So if you're dealing with print shops or you're printing this out or you just want the best color gamut you can have, then Pro Photo RGB is the best option. Closely followed by Adobe RGB, which has a wider color gamut than sRGB. So you'll retain and have more colors to work with and edit in your images. So I'm going to leave this as sRGB just for speed for now. I'm going to switch it over to 8-bit because I'm not too bothered. But again, it all comes down to what the end result, how you want to output your files. And we'll leave the compression set to nothing and then we'll just hit edit. And what that'll do is that'll load in the relevant interface and then we can start working with our image directly in the interface. So you can see if I bring this in from my other screen, you can see we now have the dedicated interface that's part of SilverFX Pro 2. So we've got a pile of presets on the left hand side which are categorized into these different groupings and you can create favorites from this or you can even create custom ones. So you can quickly and easily audition different uh, styles, so we can say we want an underexposed option. We'll take a look at overexposed, high saturation. You know, you can quickly run through these, find one that works out as a good basis for the image that you want, and then you can continue editing using the options all done on the right hand side, which there are a considerable amount of options available to you. You can compare your image, you can see you can A-B test it, you can split screen test it, you can position that by just simply dragging it over to where you want. You can do a side-by-side -side option so you can see the image you're working on and the original source image. You know, there's a lot of options available to you just with this. You can flip them back and forth. You want to work in different ways. 
uh, or you can just come back to what, look at the, the full image. But the real power of SilverFX Pro and any of the other uh, applications that ship with um, the Nick FX are all down the right hand side and some great options are available. You can see we've got the brightness control which is broken down into four different elements. We can adjust the brightness inside the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. We can also adjust the dynamic brightness. With the contrast, we've got a whole range of options. So you really do have a huge array of tools that you can use to, to adjust this. So we wanted to work with the shadows. We can adjust that. As you can see, as I move the slider, only the shadow areas are being affected. We can use dynamic brightness, which will basically go through and check the image to find out exactly what the best settings are going to be or the best edits you can do for it. And you can see structure, which is a great way of applying additional uh, contrast to the edge of your image. So you effectively make the image look sharper. And again, you can fine tune this through the highlights, midtones and shadows and even the fine structure. So you have a whole range of options available to you. You can protect your shadows and your highlights to make sure you don't damage those. If you've got various areas in your image you want to be really careful of. But one of the really cool things with the Nick collection are the control points. And what this does is you can select that. You can hit a part of your image. So let's just say, for example, this dark portion. And this brings up the little dynamic slider option. So you can see we have a whole range of different tools in there that have abbreviations. So you've got your brightness, your contrast, structure, and so on. The same things you've got down the right-hand side. But now you can edit these and adjust these in a more localized fashion. So if we use this first option, which is the circle, this will denote the actual size of the area being affected. And obviously, you're going to have a fall off around the edges of that. But you can see if we adjust the brightness now, you can see that's being localized based upon the size of this zone. So we can be very selective how we do that. So we can make sure we're very careful we don't damage the rest of the image. And you can adjust any of the different settings you want all within just this little area. And you can add as many control points as you want. So if you're working on portraits, you may find that a particular part of the face falls into shadow. You want to correct for that. Well, a control point is going to give you great access to doing that without damaging the rest of your picture. You can come down. You can see we can apply colored filters in this instance. And we can even come down and choose different film types. And that'll pick up the relevant characteristics of a particular type of film. So you can see you've got a whole range of different films. And as we mouse over any of those, we get a preview. We'll show us exactly what that's going to look like. And again, the beauty of this is you can use this as a starting point, and then you can come through and you can continue editing. Once you've got exactly what you want and you've finished making all your edits, applying your vignettes and so on, you simply hit save. That will take you back into Lightroom or Photoshop, depending on which one you're using. If you're working with Photoshop, it'll create a new layer, so it'll put that on top of it. In this instance, it creates a new a duplicate of or a a virtual copy of your file so you can see that we've got the original is left un underneath and the edited version is available to us and now we can carry on working in Lightroom itself and make additional edits should we require while using the power of um, you know the Nick software to actually really create some great starting points so that's a very quick overview of dealing with black and white images but let's take a look at the color options available so same routine again right click edit in this time we'll just come down and we'll choose Color Effects Pro. All the same options available to us, so I'll just leave those set as they are, just drop that to 8 bit for speed, and we'll hit Edit. And that'll do the same thing again. That'll now create a virtual copy for us, load in the actual relevant editor, and we can now start working with color. So you can see we have a whole range of different options available to us, which are all presets, which we can quickly and easily choose any of these and take a look at what we think. So we can say we want a black and white conversion or we want brilliance and warmth, cross balance. You know, you can come through and you can choose these. You can filter them down in the same way. We can say we want a glamour glow on our, our, our photograph. And we can sort of just come over to the right hand side. And you see we've got slightly less options available to us, but these are effectively based upon the different settings we choose from the left hand side. So we can now come through if we want to and make some additional options. This you can show detail extractor so we can adjust the amount of detail that's in there. We can zoom in. So you can then start adjusting your saturation, contrast, and so on. You've also got the control points in exactly the same fashion, so we can expand that. And you can see we've got control points where we can add a new control point in there in the same kind of way. So we can expand that out, contract it. And we can deal with the opacity on that example. So, you know, 
There's a whole range of things what you can do with the color option as well. So let's just cancel that out. And what we'll do is we'll just right click again. We'll come into edit in and we'll say analog effects pro two. Same routine again, edit that. And what this does is it allows us to simply replicate analog camera effects. So if you want to get a kind of cool special effect from an old analog camera, then you can do that quite quickly and easily by using any of the, the presets on the left hand side, or you can actually create your own custom presets. So these are choosing from classic cameras. So they got the characteristics of different types of cameras. And as you can see over the right hand side, when we open up any of these, we open up a range of different options available to us to actually configure this the way we want. We can create custom ones. So we could give that a name and create our own custom preset. It's all really cool. We can expand the classic cameras option out and we can come through and we can choose quite a range of different options available to us. So we could say we want to put a subtle bokeh, should we say, on, on an image. Or you can now choose from one of the presets. Or you can come in and you can make adjustments yourself to any of these. You can create your own control points to adjust things in a localized fashion as opposed to a global fashion. You know, the the it's almost endless the kind of things you can do with this. And for the fact it's now become free, I think it'd be crazy not to get this. It really is great. Your photo plate, we can get a little bit creative and create some damaged looking photographs, which again, look fantastic. We can choose the different kinds of effect we want to apply to it, the sort of the background effect of the, the, the actual photograph itself or the photo paper where it's been damaged. You can see you easily select that. So you want to get a nice gritty effect, you can do that. You can even use control points on this. So we've got a whole range of things we can do. Double exposure, zoom and rotate blur, bokeh, lens distortion, basic adjustments. As you can see, we've got a few different options available to us there. So the fact this is free is just kind of crazy these days because this is an incredibly powerful piece of software. Now, hopefully this doesn't mean that Google are going to turn around and actually drop support for this in the near future because that would be a real shame because it really does open up some creative possibilities. And if you're the kind of person that you don't have a huge amount of time to be able to edit your images from start to finish, you want something that's a quick recipe that you can just tweak, then this gives you some real options available to you which you can just quickly skim through, find the one you want, edit and adjust to your heart's content, whether that's a simple two-minute job or a two-hour job. just gives you a whole range of extra tools you've got available to you, especially inside Lightroom. Well, I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's given you a reason to pop on to download this because it's such a good deal. And, um, well, if you did find this useful, please hit the subscribe button below to be kept up to date with all the new content that we add to the channel on a weekly basis. If you've got any comments on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. We try to answer every single question. We read every comment. Well, until next time, take care.